Your Excellency, the President of Republic of Uganda, our First Lady, Mrs. Janet Museveni, Your Excellency, Vice President, and all protocol observed, and as established by my brother. My name is Diana Acheng. I am the oldest, and my father knew that I did not like to, my age to be disclosed, but it would embarrass me when, when he introduced me to, my, to his friends or gathering. He said, this is the oldest daughter. Can you tell them how old you are? And I would say, no. The mid-February, I spoke to my dad while he was uh, already admitted in Seattle. He said, I'm doing much better. And if I'm uh, doing a lot better than you saw me during Christmas, everything is going well. And, and she spoke to my seven-year-old daughter, Joanna, and told me, told her, hey, greeted Joanna. Joanna was, uh, was doing something and she ran off, but he said, it's okay. He said, take care of that girl for me. Don't let anything harm her. So he said, Diana, you're a nurse. I'll be communicating to you and updating you on what's going on, but I want you to be, uh, keep, keep everything confidential. I said, yes, and he said, I love you so much. I love you so much, he repeated it several times. So, two weeks passed by, and he said, he had told me, he has told me, do not contact me unless I do, but if you feel that it's uh, an emergency, then do so. So I waited after two weeks. I didn't hear anything, so I, like, I initiated the conversation, and I, I called Aunt Patricia, hey, what's going on? And she said, we have feel the setback. And I'm saying, okay, I'm coming. March 10th was the day I was supposed to have started my new assignment. But for some reason, God has ways of doing things that I could not get myself to sign that contract. They even sweetened the deal for me, and I was like, who am I to refuse? But it didn't happen because that was the day that I was going to see my dad. So I took a flight from Phoenix to Seattle. I went straight to the hospital. When I saw my father, I was in shock. I didn't remember seeing him that way, but it was strong. I came and embraced Auntie Patricia, and I said, everything will be fine. He's going to get up because he's a fighter. My father is relentless. He's going to get out of this. I'm strong. Uh, Uncle Pio came and joined us. Uh, we sat and talked. But when he first, when I saw him, he saw me and said, hey, Diana, you're here. I said, yes, I'm here. So I stood by his side. And he dozed off a bit. And then he got up and said, hey, where's this stupid girl? He always referred to me as stupid girl. If I annoyed him, and then I protest, but I'll give anything for him to call me, you stupid girl. So we spent days, I would sp sleep at the hospital with Auntie Patricia, we would encourage each other, we would pray with him, or stay beside him. And when I first saw him, he, the very first word he told me was, Diana, which means my time has come. I said, no, nga Kobe, and he didn't say anything. And he told me, take care of your siblings for me. I know you can do it. Several days pass, I go back to Phoenix to send my daughter off to go see her grandmother for spring break. And then a day later, I come back, but he's, 
condition was deteriorating. And when I saw him again, I just broke down and I just cried the entire time. I became so angry. I told him, Daddy, why are you giving up? You are strong, you are a fighter. You've told us not to give up. Why are you not fighting? His last words to me were, Diana, life is delicate. Handle it with care. He had difficulty talking. He couldn't talk or articulate words, but every now and then he would say something that was meaningful. So Friday night, I stayed with him. We prayed. I, I called uh, Andrew, connected us to one of the pastors, and we prayed and prayed throughout, and we would have 30-minute uh, breaks, and then prayed all, we prayed throughout the night. So Saturday, Ezra came and joined us. I briefed him a bit. I was like, that is not the way you remember, so I want you to be uh, strong. He's not been eating, and if you see him that way, don't break. But so I came down because down to the lobby because there was visitor res restriction. Afterwards, I went back to his room, and then the last words I said to him was, "Daddy, thank you for fighting. I know you have been fighting. We will come through this. Thank you." Little did I know that I was releasing him to go. Those were very, my very last words to him. So I joined Ezra back to the apartment where we were staying. And then he joined me later. We were drinking Lucozid. And we were joking about it, that this Lucozid doesn't taste like the way we remember. We used to fake sickness just to get the leukosid. So I called our sister team on the phone. That was Saturday, the 19th. I looked at the time afterwards, it was 10.34. We spoke, and then a team told us that she was broke. I said, I team, why are you broke? Don't be broke. God is a provider. All you have to do is ask, and you receive, seek, and you will find. Something might happen on your mobile money. And she said, I doubt it. But if it did, she will get a notification from MTN saying, yellow, there is unusual activity on your account. For that, we laughed so, so hard. We laughed, and we got headache. We just continuously laughed. I've never laughed so hard in my life like I did that day. And then we ended up drinking the leukosid anyways. My father died at 10.50, Saturday the 19th Pacific time, USS time, which would have been 8.50 Ugandan time. And what was poignant about the, the laughter was the exact same time we were laughing so hard. That was the time our dad was passing. I can never. Later in the night, Auntie Patricia came. I, was, I looked at her, I was like, this cannot be right. She shouldn't be here. And she told us, it's gone, I froze. I was like, this is not possible, we've been praying. Is there a God? I, was, I told Tina, one of the personal assistants, that I just don't want anybody to talk to me about God, because if God was there, my father would not have died. I go to Phoenix. On, the, my, on my flight back to Phoenix, 
I cried throughout. I was like, how am I going to tell my seven-year-old daughter that her grandpa is dead? I braced myself. Some of my friends messaged me and said, you just have to tell her. So I approached her and I told her, Joanna, grandpa is dead. And I asked her, Joanna, do you know what death is? Could you explain it to me? And she said, death is when you stop breathing. You're basically gone. But you go to heaven and then become our angel. And then she, she asked me, what about his money? I said, what money? She was like, Grandpa was the third most important person in Uganda, so I would think there has to be some kind of money. I said, Joanna, that's, don't you think that's a bit insensitive? But what she said after was what broke me. She said, I will miss Grandpa a lot but he's now in heaven with the angels. He's going to be watching over us and we will be okay. My father was an exceptional man and I'm just beginning to learn how much exceptional he was. All the stories, all the tributes have given me strength to stand tall knowing that my father's left a great legacy for all of us to be proud of. I'd like to thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, for doing everything possible to see that my father's life was saved. And also for reaching out to me personally to extend his condolence. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank uh, Right Honorable Speaker for standing with me while I was in Seattle. I will also, oh, not only that, to extend her hand and to be our auntie because she called my dad his brother, her brother rather. I would also like to thank the Minister of Finance, no, sorry, uh, Health for coordinating the care and transition of care until for my father to get the best care that he could possibly get. I'd like to thank Honorable Mao, Uncle Opio Lawyer, Chief Justice for being there and being uh, standing strong by us. I want also to thank uh, his Excellency, the ambassador for the U.S. mission, who did his work diligently to expatriate my father's remains here and supporting us. And a special thanks to Auntie Patricia, you were a trooper, and thank you for staying with my father and all the sacrifices you've made. Thank you, everyone, and members of uh, Uganda for standing with us. Thank you.